Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trimmed with white and weighing in at 141 and one quarter pounds. His professional record, 26 victories, including 19 knockouts with only two losses and one draw. From St. Louis, Missouri, here is the former junior welterweight champion of the world, Tehran Trap And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with blue, and weighing in at 141 and one half pounds. His professional record, 33 victories, including 27 knockouts, with five defeats. From Jersey City, New Jersey, ladies and gentlemen, the ultimate blood and guts warrior, former junior lightweight champion of the world, Arturo Hundergaardi! Good evening, gentlemen. Everyone, I'm from the room in the locker room. Let's finish gloves and have a good fight. Go ahead. So here we go with Gotti and Millet. I think it's very striking, Arnie, that, you know, Gotti lost three fights in a row back in 1998. He lost very little of his marketability. That can't happen in the sport, except for with him. Except for bleeders. People like to see blood. They really love to see when bleeders can win. That's when it's really rare. So here is Gotti and Millet, two quality fighters. Opening round, don't ever go anywhere. This video when Gotti fights, he's going to open it up and make it exciting sooner or later. And you don't always know which way. Gotti really carrying this weight nicely too, Dave. Looks a lot bigger than Millet at this juncture here. Well. And that was always a big controversy going back to Joey Gamache yeah. fight is how much weight he puts on after the weigh-in. And he looks a good 10 pounds heavier. Good shot here by Gotti. Terrific right hand. Millet trying to close ground on him. Gotti wasted no time. Scored very well with the right hand. Trying to use some reach here on Millet as well. You know, according to the stats that we have, it says that God is only an inch taller, but he looks a lot bigger than that. And it says he only has a one-inch reach advantage, and he's really peppering him from the outside. Yeah, he's fighting him like he's got a four- to five-inch reach, effectively. And as Millette gets inside and scores with the right hand, Gotti with a hook, landed a bit low. He can unfurl a whirlwind of power punches, and he can also be cut, so... There is usually drama in a Gotti fight. Scores with a hook. Keep an eye on the suspect chin also, Dave, of Millette. You know, he's been stopped twice. And not just by Zab Jury. He was stopped by Sean Bain Mitchell back in 95. Millette stalking here. Got to content to stay back, move, and look for a shot. Landed a good right hand earlier in this round. Gotti scores again. Very deliberate at this juncture. Good right hand and Millet back and they start to trade. Gotti really structured. He's not missing anything. Look what Millet's dropping his hands to. And this is something you don't do against a headhunter. Millet has that left hand down. He wants to fire some type of an up jab from it. Gotti hits him with a hook. Well, that is rock. Comes forward again. And low balance there. I mean, let's see the tighter of the two also, Dave. Doesn't seem comfortable in there at all. Nothing happens when you're only the big puncher. You're afraid of making a mistake as we end the opener. I would like to see it early in the fight if you're in their corner. So round two, Arturo Gatti in the white trunks versus Duran Millet. Ten rounds in the junior welterweight division. Well, Jim Santa already getting on Duran Millet, the holding and hitting. And that's 
two people now fighting two rounds, but I guess not what he needs after a very rough first round. Good hook backing away by Gotti. Good time to point out also now the training Gotti, his former world champion Buddy McGirt. Right Boy, he's happy between rounds, but he's not going to be happy to find Gotti with his back up to the ropes. Not where he wants to be. Collette trying to work on the inside, fire some uppercuts. Yeah, so many different trainers have tried with Gotti to harness that power and mix in some boxing with it. And Gotti himself has said, hey, you know, I need to do that. I can box. I can make fights easier for myself. And then it just doesn't happen when he gets inside the ring. Gotti showed a good sense of humor when he was told that he was going to be used in one of the computer fight games. And he said, I haven't seen it yet. I hope I don't cut too much in that game. <laughs> the, game the game comes with adrenaline 1-1000. One, one That's right. <laughs> and your own Joe Souza. Good right hand by Gotti. Then Malek comes back. But that's another theory quality of his. Uh, he knows what is said about the lack of defense and plays into it. He's acknowledging the point behind the head right there from Mollet, too. Mollet's starting to get frustrated. Good right hand by Gotti. Now you see guys trying to hold up when their reach is off and they can't seem to get inside. And Mollet is the body shot balanced here. His body comes in. Mollet is disorganized. Body shot really hurt. Millette took his legs away and he had to drop his hand to protect the side. No reactions by Millette. It's Gotti on court. Another hook and then a big uppercut. Here comes Gotti. He may try to finish it here. Millette is back against the corner. Gotti with the body shot. Millette fighting his way out of the corner. Good shot by Millette. As he shows some guts and comes back. Gotti had some moments on him. Millette got brave. Millette had his legs taken away from him today by the body shots and allowed Gotti to go upstairs. And where he's getting the second wind in this round, I don't know. But now he's got Gotti retreating. Some quickly recuperative powers by Teron Millette. And he needed that in this round because Gotti was on the verge of something big. from Madison Square Garden. This is Dave Bontempo and Arnie Rosenthal. I'm glad you're enjoying this one as Gotti and Millette off to a fast start. Good hook by Gotti. Millette trying to rally on the inside with the hook. And Dave, ever since Millette was hurt the second round, he's almost fighting better at this point. Well, you know, he touched on something about him being tight early in the fight. Maybe that loosened him up. Well, not initially, he certainly took his legs away, but once he got off those ropes, he took the fight for Gotti. Not enough to win that round, but certainly took the last part of it. You know, once those cobwebs cleared up, he came back to Gotti. He was shaking badly in that round, and was on the ropes, and Gotti, as you know from watching him, went right for the finish, but Mallette able to withstand it and then come back. Gotti fires the hook. Good short right hand by Millett. And now he scores. Well, what he's doing right now is he's timing Gotti. When Gotti goes downstairs to the body, he's going upstairs before body, uh, Gotti can connect. Good right by Millett. And I think if he can continue to keep Gotti away from his body and counter at the same time, Things can change, but not what you need. Right hand leads like that and keeps your left flow. A big if indeed as Gotti opens up. <laughs> Gotti has landed a couple right hand leads in this fight, which is something you see if he was fighting a southpaw, so it makes it a bit unconventional. And he surprised Millette with those. Millette's asking for it though. If he's going to keep his left down and his knee, Gotti's going to take the shot and throw the right hand lead. Tough punch to throw, too. Really tough punch to throw when you're a writer. It's one of the textbook don'ts. But there are times when you can throw that textbook away. Gotti has done it twice 
in this fight. Two good right hand leads in a oh, Gamble let us down because he got rocked. The patented Gotti hook. Seven. Mullet Glacier hey, okay. gets up. Okay, let's go. I'm watching. Uses the count. Let's see if he can recover this time. Gotti <laughs> tries to finish it. Mullet standing straight up. Gotti goes in for the finish. He would love to finish it here. He's running out of time in this round. Good chance, but Millett only has a few seconds to kill off. He is getting hurt. The clock comes in just in time. And if you ever want to use the phrase, saved by the bell, that's the time. He has to be walked back to his corner, though, by Jim Sander. And the doctors in that corner right now, they're going to take a hard look at Teron Millett. And if you're standing in the wrong corner, it's not a good advertisement for keeping yourself in the fight. Well, they need the 60 seconds. You there, not you there. You got the move, Pep. You trying to, you trying to, you trying to power one of the people. You know what I'm saying? You trying to power one of the people. Watch out, he able to put the left down. That huge hook. You know, he's been getting him with the right hands, Johnny. And uh, he hit the hook. And, and just when you least expect it, and I think he had Millette looking for it, but he also had Millette protecting his body, as we mentioned. Millette was really rocked by those body shots. Back in the first round, he had those elbows tucked in, but he was really leaving his face open, and hence the left hook drops him. Fourth round action now. Millette not all the way back. As far as the steadiness, 60 seconds did help. But uh, Gotti on top of him with opportunity standing before him. Arturo Gotti. To his credit, Dr. William Layton in, in the left corner between rounds taking a long look. Didn't leave. Stayed there for the entire 60 seconds watching over him. Good shot here by Gotti. Up on top. Millet took them. The question is how long can he take it for? Well, he will have to do something to take the play away from Gotti. But Gotti is overpowering him. What that does, if you're Millet, you really know you can't afford to make a mistake. It might make you tentative. So Millet must endure here, but you got to hit him with an outside uppercut. Millet's not offering anything right now. He's got to off. Got to, got to, he's just able to walk in. He could end this fight at any time. Got he fired a shot that Normally, you wouldn't want to see your fighter throw the hook from out deep like that in the uppercut, but Millet was not able to make him pay for it. He still hurt in the last round. Oh, absolutely. That's the guy can't leave to start off the exchange. Good shot again by God. Well, you know, he has to fight a left field. He's comfortable because he's fighting the right hand lead. Yeah, there was talk of God or Millet. Fighting Mickey Ward with Jesse James Leha. Big shot! Oh, by right. The sky's over. A huge right hand. Boy, the left hook gets him, and then the right hand gets him. Millet gets Six. up, but Seven. he's got to eight. stop this fight. Eyes. He's going to stop the fight. Hey, he's going to make a wall right. to him. Millet passes that test. That's a mistake. Here big mistake, Dave. The fight should be stopped. Santa right on top. Next big shot he may do it, but Gotti is there. Big shot there. It shouldn't have gone this long. He should not have allowed that knockdown to happen with the head going down. Well, big it's over now. Here. It's over now. And maybe more than over. Teron Millet went down very heavy there with his head hitting. Jim Santa should have stopped it after that first knockdown in this round. Three knockdowns for Arturo Gotti and just looking ever hey. the part of the stronger fighter here. Just too strong. The hook, the right hand, and Arturo Gotti able to overpower him. Very surprised though at the stoppage not being sooner. It was, it was much too slow. It should have not allowed that second knockdown to happen. That's when accidents happen. And his head hit the ground very heavy. Yeah. 
And it was, it was so obvious at that point, Dave, how Gatti was, was dominating this fight. So when he gets on top of you and uh, is on the lead end, they're in some trouble. Well, they were going to put the winner of this against Mickey Ward or Jesse James Leha, but then they had a controversial bout back in January. Let's see how that works out. But here's Gotti's first knockdown from that round, that huge right hand behind the jabs. And we talked about how difficult it is to show, throw the right hand lead, how it should not really be done if you're not fighting against Alpha, but he's rewriting the textbook tonight. Well, he's quick enough in that instance, and plus the jab's setting it up so they, they throw Millet off. Here's knockdown number two after Millet had gotten up and walked to Jim Santa. A hook, the right hand, let's watch how Millet crashes. Fortunately, the head is braced by the back hitting the canvas first. And that is good news in that regard because if the head hits it straight, it's trouble. At least the back did hit first. So he is whacked here by Gotti. Just so much power. And that's your typical 140-pounder. And, and they talk about how much weight he puts on after these fights. And it's hard to imagine him when he was down fighting at lighter weights. And it doesn't look like the same. And, of course, when he fights, they say, hey, we're going to have the way in closer to the fight so that you can't go up. But uh, he's been subject to that. Jimmy Santa, following the second knockdown in round number four, called the halt to about at 2 minutes and 23 seconds of that round. The winner by knockout victory, the ultimate blood and guts warrior from New Jersey City, New Jersey, former champion Arturo Hondurgati. Well, the layoff didn't hurt. No, okay. there was no signs of rust. In fact, uh, maybe uh, he's better than most after a layoff because the scar tissue getting a chance to yeah, not be so prominent, the skin getting a chance to heal. You know, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't focus a little bit on what it, you know what happened with Malek in general. He was not right from the opening bell. They, his nice. hands weren't positioned properly. He was stiff. Didn't it was look like tight. he warmed up properly. Uh, you would think a fighter of his experience could have gotten three, four rounds, stay on the outside, show a little movement to Gotti, try to work that scar tissue a little bit. What the wrong fight from the very outset. There's something. Let's wait for the interview here. I was in good last night. I won, and I wasn't hurt. I'm told that... Buddy McGirt, the former welterweight title holder, showed you a lot of his own action photos and that you learned from him. What did you learn from him? Well, I learned that to be calm in the ring, to just stay with your head and hit when it's time to hit, not hit, just because you was hit. And uh, that's what I learned, to be calm in the ring. And uh, actually, in the room, he was very calm. I was calm myself in the dressing room. So I came into the ring very calm. And uh, after the first round, I almost... Went on a slug press, so thank God I didn't, because I kept my composure after the first round, but he told me to relax, and I did. Nothing worked out all right. And is this the weight now that you feel you can be comfortable at and still strong? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, this is my first time coming down 140. It's been a long time, and uh, my punching power is back, and uh, on my next fight, I'll be even stronger. Speaking of your next fight, who would you like to fight now? Uh, I'd like to fight uh, Jesse Suzlea. Mickey Ward, it's, you know, it's really up to whoever, whoever wants to fight me, I'll fight both of them. Did this fight revive your career? Definitely, uh, they revived me, they revived everybody around me, because I have a lot of boxing left in me, and uh, I need a good win. And I found my weight class, 140, and I'm definitely going to win the world title again. Thank you very much, Arturo. Thank you. Well, Arturo Gotti... Uh